Hi, I'm Pat with Wildlife Company. I'm under here today doing a rat trapping and exclusion project. Rat trapping is one of those things that can seem real simple when you start. It ends up being a lot more complicated once you get about halfway through. and Once you figure it out, it may be too late. You may have already made some serious mistakes. If you want to follow me under here today, you'll learn a little bit more about recognizing the rat sign, what kind of things rats can do and what they're like. And it might help you a little bit if you have a rat problem of your own. White suit and the full face respirator may seem like overkill just for some rat trapping. But you can see floating around in front of the lens here a lot of dust in the air, a lot of that's insulation, some of it's probably some dirt, some of it is rat droppings. So full face respirator seems to make a lot of sense, especially when you look up above you and you touch some of that insulation and it starts to fall in your eyes. This is an old insulation bag I found down here in this crawl space. It talks right on the back about cancer risks associated with this insulation. When I got done, cartridges on this mask clogged. All that would have been inside my lungs. It's an incredible mess down here. Getting through it's hard. You crawl everywhere you go. A lot of debris left. Workers that have been down here before. Insulation, bags were carried out. All the insulation is hanging down because the rats got up in it making nests traveling through it. It's quite a wreck. A rat is really an amazing creature. You can make a four to five foot horizontal leap or a three foot vertical leap. If I could do that, I wouldn't need a ladder to get on top of houses to be able to do squirrel jobs. Right here you can see a wall that's four block high. Plenty short enough that a rat could get up on top. Once he's up there, he's up there traveling along this pipe, tunneling through the insulation. This is the same pipe from the other end. The rats have run along the pipe, crossed over onto the masonry sill, and gotten up between the joist and the floor. Pulled the insulation out here so you can see up in there. Previous owner tacked in some aluminum window screen to try and keep them from running up into the floors, into the walls. But the right rats went right past it, pulled down a corner of it, and came in. This place, the flooring is covered with rat droppings. It's pretty much everywhere. Another good reason for the white suit. Here you can see a nice little collection of them on the floor. Here's a few. You can get an idea how big they are. The Norway rat, which is the species we're dealing with here, the droppings are blunt on both ends. A lot bigger than a mouse. Rat droppings can stay in the remote parts of houses for years. But if you find moist droppings, that's a good sign that you have an active population. Like you saw earlier, they like to travel along the tops of pipes. Here you can see where dust is collected on top of the pipe, but it's been rubbed off at the very crest of the pipe where they've traveled down the length of the pipe be able to access nest and runways. Here they've traveled down the length of this pipe, come up to some insulation, dug their way through it, created a nest cavity inside of it.
this ductwork sagged down and got close enough to the ground that they could stand and tear a hole through it. Flexible ductwork is two layers of plastic with some insulation sandwiched in between and some wire added for stiffness. These rats had no trouble tearing the way through. The customer said that they started smelling a urine smell in their air conditioning system. This is why. Generally speaking, insulation down here is a wreck. Rats have been all through it. Their weight helps pull it down. And if they don't pull it down, they'll tunnel through it and create nests. Inside those nests and those runways, there's tons of droppings, chewed up nesting materials, food, anything they could drag in there. Here were, they were running the length of an air conditioning line. They were able to get up to the ductwork and tear a small hole in it. But once they traveled down this air conditioning line, they made a hole in the insulation, crawled in and made another nest. They like to run along the sill above the masonry, crossing under the joist. Here they've done that and gone upward into the insulation itself. From there, they can run the width of the house between the joists. This is what happens once they get between the joists. They can get up into the insulation. Here the insulation is torn. You can see where they've carried in pink insulation from somewhere else in the house and made a nest out of it. Thanks for coming along and watching. If you have trouble with rats, give the Wildlife Company a call at wildlifecompanytn.com.